For part two of my review of Alone Season 9, Episode 4, I'm going to be talking about shelters. I'm going to be talking about constipation <laughs> and gut issues that happen out there. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the idea of the loneliness that starts to really confront people after they've been out there for a couple weeks. I'm going to circle back to something we saw Adam do, which was putting up a photo of his girlfriend and some strategies I have that might make it a little bit easier to combat that loneliness. And also talking about the psychology of solitude and how we start to see some interesting patterns play out around this time, around three weeks out. And then of course I will be talking about Igor's hard decision. So stick with me and I will give you some great nuggets to think about that you might not be seeing just from viewing episode four. Now we see Igor and I love the shot coming in of seeing all of the seals scurry off the rocks. As we see that large view panning in on Igor, we can see just how close he is to the open ocean, which of course we knew because he's getting a lot of seaweed, right? But I really appreciate how in this episode, you can really see that landscape. And it looks like he is just at the very edge, just at the outlet of that river as it meets the Labrador Sea. And Igor is having a rough time. Physically, he is really hurting. And this brings up what I talked about in one of my earlier reviews in terms of shelter and really, really ambitious shelters. It is not not a good equation in terms of the amount of effort it takes in. He has got some huge logs there and that is a ton of weight. And if you think about it, Igor is a really tall guy. So that means he's having to lift those things even higher up into the air than a shorty like myself, which is a lot more calories and it is hard on the body. And we are seeing it start to really take its toll. So I think, unfortunately, that some of the ways we have seen people do shelter in the past on a loan gets the idea into people's heads that big log cabins are a good way to go. And I just disagree. We've seen some people who have done all right with them, but by and large, I don't think it's worth the trade-off. Great illustration of that. And oh, it's painful to see how beat up Igor's body is clearly doing everything he can. He is on it with the stretching and the exercises, but there's only so much you can do if your body is really hurting and you're still making it haul enormous logs, right? And all of that ax work, it's exhausting. It's a ton of energy, even if you're eating a whole lot. And he is a big guy eating very, very little. Looks like he's had less than most of the people out there at this point. So it's no wonder that his body is really starting to hurt and feel it. I love that Igor says, it is harder than it looks on TV, folks. That is so true. It's really hard to get the full experience from just these little snippets of it. And just a reminder that this is absolutely all 100% what's happening, but it's a highly edited version because we're only seeing little bits of it. So there are probably a lot of struggles and hard times that we are not seeing as the viewers. I'm gonna say there definitely are a lot of hard times that we're not seeing as the viewers. So I like that Igor points that out because he has been both a viewer and a participant and knows how to see the difference really clearly now. And oof. Darn it, right? We see Igor out there trying to fish, but there is a seal swimming all around. So it's like, great, there are fish here, but oh my gosh, there's a seal here. So that makes fishing really challenging because you better believe that if he gets a fish and there's the sounds and commotion of a distressed fish in the water near the seal, that seal is gonna be swiping it up off of his line and then potentially getting a hook in it and they're not allowed to damage seals. And so it's a really rough situation. And again, quite an illustration of how dang close to the mouth of the water he is. Now, being in brackish water, which it's gotta be because he's so close to the ocean and also because he has so much seaweed, that's gonna potentially improve the fish populations of certain type of fish. But there's a lot of fish that can't deal with brackish water. And it's really possible that he doesn't have access to some of those other freshwater fish that some of the people who are further inland have. So it seems like it's a pretty challenging fishing location on a lot of levels for Igor. Tom is super excited about his first part of his structure, which is just a little wall. It's a beautiful wall. I love that that alone is such a satisfying thing to him. And I really am appreciating looking at his site and seeing how his site looks remarkably similar to the site that Jesse is building into, but he's doing this very low shelter, which it looks like is really solid, where she has this huge, really ambitious shelter that so far has a lot of open space. So I, I'm more with the way Tom is dealing with that 
size and shape of space than how Jesse is doing. And I'm really curious to see how the rest of Tom's shelter is going to take place. He's going to need a little bit more than one wall. A roof seems like it's going to be very key very soon, of course. So excited to see how that's going to come together for him. Also, dang, Tom with the fishing, right? This guy clearly knows what he's doing with fly fishing. You can just see it in the fluid motion of his arm and knowing right where the holes are. And it seems like he has a cherry spot in terms of fishing right at a bend of the river there where he's got some nice deep holes. And wow, that brook trout, how gorgeous is that? And big, I love it. Congratulations, Tom. So wonderful watching you get those big beautiful trout. I love him talking like what this would be like on the New York City menu, the you know nested on a bed of fur with a sand bed and then the vision of the waiter sprinkling rain so you get the real Labrador experience. Love it. Again we see him cooking over an open fire though so I'm hoping that he's not losing too much of the fat. He's doing it with the skin on so hopefully that's going to be keeping that fat so he's not losing much but oh my gosh be conservative with that fat guys. Ah! <laughs> Our next scene is back to Igor and watching him be so excited about one muscle. And I love this and it really brings me back because there was a night when I had gone days and days, weeks without food on season six and then I found five little grubs in a fallen tree and it was maybe a quarter teaspoon of food but it was so amazing and so i'm really i'm really back to that when i see igor just oh being so excited about one small muscle and that little bit of protein that is in it and it says right there it's only 14 calories in the subscript on the screen but what those calories what that bite of meat and real protein does for you is so much bigger than just the calorie count and you can just see that written all over his face Igor also talks about what it means to him to be representing as a Middle Eastern man on the show. And I really love that about season nine. We're seeing more diversity represented than we have in any of the other seasons. We've got Timogen, the first Asian American on the show. We've got Igor, who's got Middle Eastern ancestry. And then we've got Juan Pablo from Mexico originally. And Wow, that is three out of seven folks who are not your kind of typical represented demographic in the survival world. So love that there's a lot more diversity. I wish they had more than two women, I have to say. I'm always bummed at how low the numbers of women on there, but great season in terms of diversity. And thank you, Igor, for bringing that up and how important it is to be role modeling for people who don't see themselves reflected in a lot of the, the survival icons to know that they can get out there and do it too. Super exciting to see Benji's bait station working and that footage of that bear just tearing into those intestines. Wow, good call Benji on making that bait station. That said, how are you going to know when the bear is there? It would be awesome if Benji was so lucky as, say, Juan Pablo to have a pile of cans so he could have made some kind of alarm system so that he can hear from a distance when the bear is there. Because once it's eaten all of his guts, if he misses that opportunity, then he might miss later opportunities at the bear. So hopefully he's going to see, okay, the bear came and then the bear is going to remember hey, this is the spot I go for some amazing free grub, and hopefully they will come together there at some point in the future. Super, super cool to have that bear right up close snorfling into the camera though, right? <laughs> and again, we see Igor's cabin just killing him and how ambitious it is and how big and solid those logs are. And it seems like every shot of him every day, every half a day, we can see more and more the toll it's taking on his body. And we're getting now to where it's not just taking a toll on his back and his muscles and his calorie load, but starting to affect his heart. And again, this is something that we see a lot. Starvation is just a huge stress on all systems in the body. The electrolyte imbalance is really hard. Now, Igor is lucky because he's going to be having more minerals than the other folks because of that seaweed and because of being near brackish water, which again, the muscle, right? So he probably has more salt. So he's actually better off, but really common for people to have hard time around their hearts getting a little wild. We saw it on 
season eight with Tim. We saw it with Biko towards the end of his time on season eight. It's just unfortunately a really common thing for folks out there. And that's really scary because a sore back is one thing, but your heart starting to not beat well on you, this is a real issue. Now we head back to Terry, 13 days and no pooping. Oh, so rough, right? So rough. He can't rest well, even crawling into a shelter is no relief. It's getting dire for Terry. Love these shots of Terry with his shelter. I was concerned about Terry with his shelter on episode two. The walls were really slack. He just had a ridge pole, but not much else. So it's really, really nice to see his shelter coming together. And now I am into his shelter. I think that his solid walls on either side is great with that door that he can close so he can completely seal it. I'm curious what he's doing around fire, if he has fire in the shelter or if he's just cooking outside of it, which would be my guess, because that does not look like a shelter that's well set up for smoke to get out of it. So we'll see how it goes. But the fact that he can really seal that in, it's looking awesome. I like his insulation on the walls and weighting down the walls, but with moss so that the, the rafters that he has leaned against there can't damage the tarp. Awesome. Really nice to see Terry. And then finally, we see Terry <laughs> answering nature's call. And you can really see the relief written all over his face. You can hear it in his voice. And he says, I am a new man. So all of a sudden, everything seems possible for Terry. And he's got a new, a new lease on life and desire to be out there. Just, again, illustrating what a big deal pooping versus not pooping is out there. And then we go back to Igor sitting with a really hard decision. What's he going to do? He takes some time to think about it. He walks around in the woods. It looks pretty miserable just seeing him sitting there on his half done shelter in the rain, trying to decide what to do. We see Igor's shelter behind him, his temporary shelter, which is really not working for him. It's low, there's not a lot of extra airspace. Low is good in terms of keeping heat in, but given how incredibly wet his site is, and he talks about how it's just a bowl that just fills with water whenever it rains, which it's mostly doing. So because he has very little airflow in that shelter and because it isn't taut, he's getting a lot of condensation in there. Not great, really sapping his energy to have to deal with wet gear and a wet sleeping bag regularly. So just being brutal on Igor. And I love just his perspective on it being an, an initiatory experience getting ready to turn 40 and how having so little out there makes you so appreciative of everything you have. Igor has talked about how all he wants to do is go home and wrap his arms around his wife. And so this feels like a good segue to talk a bit about how to deal with missing your loved ones when you are out there on alone. And I wanted to talk about this when we saw Adam putting the picture of his girlfriend up in his cabin on an earlier episode. And the idea that you get to take a photo one photo out there with you. And most people take a photo of their loved ones. I wouldn't choose to do as Adam did and have that photo just up front and center in your face all the time, because then you are reminded all the time of what it is you're missing. And once that is up and in your head all the time, it is really hard. And we see Igor dealing with that. Like, when he was doing okay, he wasn't thinking about it, but as he's doing worse and worse, just thinking about his wife more and more. And once that starts, how it kind of snowballs in your mind and it's all you think about and all you want. And so I think that it's really wise to not have that photograph up front and center and to think about instead, what are the ways that being out there longer can feed back into your relationship with your loved ones and give you more things to share and more ways to connect? Because hopefully you're going to have the rest of your life to be around your loved ones and share everything with them. And this is your one opportunity to do something that is really unique and you're not going to be able to do again. Another thing that I think is really, really interesting that we see as time goes on in The Alone Show is people go from referring to themselves in the singular to in the plural. Really, really common. I did it too. 
Tons of people do it. We see it on this episode, people saying, we're going to go and do this. We don't know how long we'll be out here, so we'd better blah, blah, blah. Using we and our words instead of I, me, my words. And I think that that is one of the things that people do psychologically to feel less isolated out there. And you come to think of the camera and the viewers as your companions out there. So I think sometimes when people talk about we and our, they mean me and the camera or me and the audience at home which are not out there with you and they're not even going to be watching it in real time it's going to be months and months after you come out that anyone's going to be seeing this and yet there's something about that the camera as an interaction the camera as company that's really real when you're out there and i love when we start to see that shift and i feel like it usually happens between week two and three where we start to hear more of those we words coming out really really moving for me i'm gonna tear up probably watching the crew come to get igor partly because it's always an emotional moment but also because i know those people it's really sweet to see them the guy holding the camera he was out there holding the camera on my medical checks and my drop off and pick up on season six too and dan who's asking the questions and listening to him was also on my season and then nikki who is now survival staff for the show was a participant on my season so all of those folks i see standing there with igor are folks that i know it really makes it feel that much more real and impactful for me to watch igor come out really really love how Reverend Igor is and that scene where we see him just holding his hands to his head and kneeling down to the ground and giving so much thanks and gratitude to that land. Once again, thank you, Igor, for representing that. I just really feel it deep in my heart, deep in my body, and I love how good a job you do of bringing that to the camera and the viewers back home. I love that they showed that and they didn't edit those deep, deep moments out because they are really what it's all about. And then, of course, we circle back to Terry getting up in the wee hours of the early morning yet again and going out to that beaver spot and being really determined. And we know, of course, that now he is a new man. He has cleared all of the all of that heaviness from his bowels that was weighing him down. And he is ready and he is determined to be out there. And he gets a shot at that beaver and it is a good shot. But there that beaver goes right out into the middle of the river. And this is one of those spots that really illustrates where they are in relation. So I said this before, I'm gonna say again that I think that Terry must be the next one in from Igor because we saw a seal early on in Perry's spot. And now we can see on the pan in the opening up of the river and it's starting to spread out, right? So I think that the fact that that beaver dead floating in the middle of the river isn't shooting downstream is an indication that he's close enough that the tide is coming in, right? We're seeing tidal influence because that river is moving fast where say Tom is, right? We can see rushing water, but it's very common still where Terry is. So I think Terry was really, really lucky with the timing and the tides that meant that that beaver actually stayed out there long enough for him to be able to go and get it. As he's getting ready to do that, we can see that Terry is already looking really skinny. So he needs this beaver and dang, that level of cold water and the cold temperatures out, that's that's a really big risk for him. And luckily that river looks like it's actually pretty shallow. So he doesn't have to go completely down. I was worried that we were gonna see him actually swimming 100% out you know, 100 yards out, which was going to be really, really hard for him. So he's really lucky that actually most of his core wasn't underwater for a lot of that time. And then that beaver stuck around. Amazing, right? Again, I feel like his level of reverence and his hunting ethics, he gets his reward for that and getting that beautiful beaver. That is a big beaver. It looks like it's even a little bit bigger than Benji's and he has been needing this food. So pooping and then getting a beaver. Yes. Things are looking great for Terry. Congratulations. So exciting to see that come together for you, Terry. Want to remind you to please like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to know when my videos come out, hit the notifications bell. Also, all kinds of awesome benefits from joining my Patreon team. Lots going on about alone this summer. 